Hello, Acron fans! Welcome back to another exhibition match. This is Shadow Fury 33 with a match between Monkuki and Cybernetic Pony on Snowblind. Now, this is a map we have seen a great deal of because it is a map that was in the tournament and used a lot. Monkuki in the southwest side of the map, Cybernetic Pony in the northeast side of the map. Monkuki probably going to go back here. There we go. Cybernetic Pony, I think, actually went random this game. So, Cybernetic Pony has been chosen to play. Grekum! Yes, so the game has chosen for Cybernetic Pony to play Grekum. And that is what she shall play. So we shall have a Vecchio versus Grekum matchup here. And Monkuki going for, once again, deep, well not depot rush, but a foundation rush. Right off the bat, as he tends to do, all of his infantry going into Grekum base, into the Cybernetic Pony's base, I should say. And we'll be setting up a bunch of foundations. Cybernetic Pony probably sees this coming. He probably knows this is happening. He does have an Arcticus going forward. It will scout out everything. Nice spot, by the way. I like this position for it. On the hill there. It is visible, but it's... I think it's harder to get to? I'm not 100% sure. I think it actually won't make the biggest difference, but at least it's there. And it's only visible from... It's visible from fewer angles than it would be on the ground. But yeah, that's not the highest hill, so it is still fairly visible. If you see the, the way the cliff is, it's... There is still line of sight. From the low ground. However, it might not be as visible. We'll see. Monkey's forces... Not the biggest deal. What matters is that they will see the Arcticus, but more importantly, the Arcticus will see them. Cybernetic Pony will know exactly what's going on, and from here, we'll know that Monkuki is doing what he always, 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 always does. And, yeah, for the record, it is visible. But Monkuki is actually getting slightly distracted as a result of that. He, is he trying to kill the Arcticus? I think he's trying to outright kill the Arcticus. That, he must not be paying attention. He must be building. No, he's not building up here. I don't know. Okay, there we go. That makes more sense. Nope, that's after the Arcticus is dead. So, yeah, Cybernetic Pony apparently succeeding in delaying Monkuki. How how strange. Well, Octobot is up, so Cybernetic Pony will be able to defend against this. Monkuki, I mean, he kind of gave it away. And he appears to think that he's going to be fine. But he's not. So that's really not going to work out. He does have the foundations up. They are get building up depot, so there is a depot rush, actually. That's the plan, at least, but Cybernetic Pony is going to put a very abrupt stop to that. The Arcticus isn't even going to die from the looks of it. The Arcticus is just going to go forward, kill these guys off, and then we'll go on to the rest of the game. To the game proper. Unless Monkey decides to not get greedy, kill the Arcticus, and then go in there and actually, you know, do his foundation rush when he could, the earliest possible time. That apparently is not on the cards. Although we'll see, Monkuki has jumped back to the 22nd mark. Is he going to... Okay, it looks like he is still going for this somewhat. No, not really. He is going for a less cheesy strategy. Scouting out from the opening, but still, he is going for Zynvir to resource processors. So, more normal. Cybernetic Pony, however, building up the Octopod. There's really nothing to be lost from that. That's the thing to bear in mind. Cybernetic Pony going for a counterattack as well, but... There isn't anything to be lost by going for an early Octopod. For Grekum, that's pretty bog standard. So Cybernetic Pony hasn't lost anything. It's not like Monkuki has somehow caused Cybernetic Pony to build something that he wouldn't want to, waste a bunch of resources, and then someone would take advantage of that in the later game. No, Cybernetic Pony would have done this anyway, or at least would have built the Octopod anyway. The remaining Octo is in the counterattack, not necessarily, but the Octopod, yes, most certainly. However, Monkuki back at the one minute mark, he does have the Zion Veer at home. He can build another one. But he'd have to get another foundation on top of that in order for it to be healed up. And Cybernetic Pony is probably going to pretty quickly tell that he doesn't actually need to go for an early attack. But he might just do it anyway. Cybernetic Pony will probably just do it. Just go for it. Like, why not? Just kill things. You, if you can kill it, you might as well just win the game outright. It's no reason to delay. No reason to stay in the game if you don't have to. Jumping up to the three minute mark, Cybernetic Pony jumping back, sorry, jumping back to the 220 mark, Cybernetic Pony is on this time wave. He does see his units in there, he's going for it once again, and I don't imagine the outcome's gonna be that much different. Monkuki does, he does have the resources to make it different. He does have resources to build more units, build foundation to heal up. He could build a Zion Veer, and it looks like jumping back to the two minute mark, down from there, he will get a depot in time. So he's gonna get a depot, he, oh man, getting, Q Plasma in time is going to be tricky. He's, he will be able to get one Zion Pulsar. A single Zion Pulsar. Against the Octopods and Octos here, well, 
If it weren't Monkuki, if it were not Monkuki, I say he was screwed. But Monkuki is the master of Depo Heal Micro. To the point that it he is the only reason why there's or one of the main reasons there's any sort of discussion about it being broken. He is the undisputed master of Depo Heal Micro. So if anyone's gonna be able to survive this by way of clever usage of Depo Heal, it would be Monkuki. But even then, it's still one Zion Pulsar against Cybernetic Pony's oct three Octos and an Octopod. That is still going to be very tough to deal with, with two Zion Pulsars, effectively. Possibly two Zion Pulsars. This is still going to be 30 seconds before this comes up, and that is... That is not as much time as Monkuki has. He will be able to get one Zion Pulsar up in the meantime. Just barely. Like, it'll come up right at the last second, as in right now. But Cybernetti Pony is marching in. His Octos have just arrived. The Zion Pulsar is up, and the Depot is there. It will be able to heal, and Zion Pulsar has been revealed. Cybernetti Pony is fully aware of what he's up against. And of course, Monkey being Monkey, he knows it's up. I'm a bit surprised he's not attacking the Depot directly, though. He is going for the Zion Pulsar. I mean, the one thing here is that the Zion Pulsar will be out for a few seconds when it's healing, meaning the Depot is going to be vulnerable in that time. But I think Cybernetti Pony. Is he going to change this up? Yes, he is going to attack the Depot primarily. Not going to focus too much on the Zion Pulsar, just go for the Depot. That is the best option when facing Monkuki. Actually, facing Vekir in general. Go for the Depot. Although, I think at this point it's not even going to matter. I think Cybernetic Pony is going to have to fall back. One of the Autos does set to go for the Zion Pulsar, though. And another Zion Pulsar has been built. First one that was damaged, getting into the Depot for healing. And the second one will be able to chase off the Octopod. Cybernetic Pony, at the same time, has been building a Reef. He's just been expanding and getting tech behind this. Or not really expanding, but has been getting some economy, getting tech behind this. He is retreating with the Octopod. That is a wise move, getting out of there. No, you do not want to fight Zion Pulsars on their home turf. And Monkuki did successfully defend. And actually didn't even need Depot Heal, in fact. That was, that just worked out. However, I think the fact that he had Depot Heal as an option did affect Cybernetic Pony's decision making. Cybernetic Pony did decide to go for the Depot directly, which, while not a bad idea, he apparently didn't have the army size large enough to actually deal with it. Had he attacked the Zion Pulsar directly, probably would have had less firepower on the field and maybe would have dealt more damage to the Depot overall. I don't know, I think most of the damage to the Depot is actually dealt by the Zion Pulsars themselves, more than anything else. However, that stage of the game has now been done onto the next stage with Air, or whenever Submarine Pony builds advanced structures, getting Q-Plasma. He does have Faro's up, or Faro over here. He does have... Well, Zion Church to contend with, and I think Monkuki is going to go for air from here pretty quickly as well. He does... Actually, Monkuki has a slightly healthier Q-Plasma economy. Less Liquid Crystal, more Q-Plasma. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has... eight. Both of them have eight resource processors, but Cybernetic Pony is going six and two, while Monkuki is going five and three. Given that Cybernetic Pony is probably going to want to go for a lot of air, probably Faro Pods and Sepipods, well, Faropods are particularly going to require a lot of Q-Plasma. Sepipods works with this ratio, but Faropods not so much. And... Nothing... No, nothing yet. No advanced structures quite yet. Cybernetic Pony, it looks like he's trying to scout out, see what is going on here. Losing Octopods in the process. Sorry, Octos in the process, not Octopods. And noticing there is a Zion Turcher coming in. Bear in mind, Arcticus is due to tech, so at least he can see them coming. But the Articus is not by his triad, so well teleported Zion Turtur could actually harass very effectively in the back. I'm guessing Monkey is not gonna do that. He doesn't actually have the he is he gonna do that? Yes he is, he is going he is going to the back. Okay, there we go. Cybernetic Pony can still see it though. There is still this Faro here that's detecting. But now in the best spot, Cybernetic Pony is now not able to get a whole lot of Q plasma income. That's all being shut down. The Autobot trying to deal with the Zion Pulsar, but this is way too much, way too large of an army to deal with that Autobot's not going to actually live. Summoner Pony, jumping back to his point of view, 626 mark, retreats the Autobot instead of letting it stay and fight and die, so the Autobot will actually live, ultimately. But at the same time, the Zion Turcher is definitely dealing with these RPs, and looks like they are being dealt with very effectively. I'm guessing... Okay, there we go. The Arcticus is being moved in to detect the Zion Turcher. However, the Zion Turcher could still go over here or here and still deal a lot of damage. And another Zion Turcher actually is coming from the south. It is also cloaked. Monkey able to get rid of one of Cybernetic Pony's RPs entirely. 
really shutting down Cyber Knight's ability to build air units. He does have advanced structures. It has been researched, but he doesn't have enough money to actually build any number of air units. I think maybe one Sepipod, but even then you have to build a Spire. And he's losing RPs in the process. This is not good for him. However, the Arcticus is going to detect the Southern Zion Turcher, which has managed to deal a fair amount of damage to the Sogepod, and ultimately, there we go. Now it's not quite able to detect. Not quite close enough, and at the same time, the Zion Turchers are moving in. Monkuki, sorry, Zion Pulse is moving and getting rid of this first Arcticus. Monkuki is turning this right around. Cybernetic Pony is going to be losing a lot. There we go. The Arcticus is in place. It is detecting, but the Octo is still up, and the second Arcticus, sorry, not even Arcticus, this Faro needs to stand up and go up here to detect this Zion Turcher. This particular fire, or build a new one, one or the other. I don't know why Cybernetic Pony has not done this. We are looking from his point of view, by the way. This is when he is, when he's commanding. I don't know why a Faro has not been sent up here. It is now being built. However, two resource processors have, I think three actually, have been lost up to this point on Q Plasma. Cybernetic Pony's Q Plasma income has been crippled. And now the Faro is coming in here, and the Faro unfortunately coming in alone. Cybernetic Pony not having enough current energy to send in the Faro and the Octopods, unfortunately. Now the Octopod finally able to move north, but with no detection support, not going to do any good. Now, Monkey does only have about... Okay, this Zion Churcher only has about 10 seconds left of cloaking. The other one here has about half a minute left. Or sorry, not 10 seconds. It's more like 20 seconds. But now it's just about done being cloaked. But at the same time, Zion Pulsar is coming in. Cybernet Pony being attacked from all sides. And the Odd Pod, however, that thing is getting distracted. I mean, even with detection coming in, which isn't... Okay, it doesn't matter. This, like I said, the Zion Turcher is no longer cloaked, out of energy for cloaking. And Faro is coming in here to detect the other Zion Turcher and destroys it too. So Cybernet Pony able to deal with everything. Getting rid of these two Zion Turchers and getting rid of ultimately the Zion Pulsars, but still that's a lot of damage being dealt. That was pretty crippling. And at the same time, Monkey did get a slipgate. He got gate tech. All the way to get tech, got a slipgate. He could chronoport these guys back if he wanted to. And just teleport back, go for an uppercut with all this. I think he might actually be doing so too. Let's see. And Zion Turcher coming back in, it'll probably heal up in the depot first. Or maybe not. Maybe it'll just is he gonna go in for an attack? No, he is... He, okay, good. He is healing it up. Now, Cybernetic Pony back at the 11-minute mark. He has gone for a counterattack. Fed up with this crap. He's going back. He's going to try to get rid of Cybernetic Pony here, but that's... Sorry, try to get rid of Monkey. He's not going to try to get rid of himself. That would be trivial to do. Just hit the surrender button. But he's not going to hit the surrender button and get rid of himself. He is going instead to try to get rid of Monkey. A more challenging but more rewarding task. Now, of course, Monkey does not have any cloak energy left in these things. A bit in this one, but hardly any in the one that just decloaked. So he could chronoport, and he is exactly, he's doing exactly that, chronoporting and teleporting them back in. That is, that's going to be tricky to pull off though. I mean, this is at the same time that everything else was attacking. So this is earlier in the game. This Octopod here that's actually doing a pretty good job defending does get destroyed. The Reef goes down as well. However, that Reef had very little healing energy to be, well, probably has a little healing energy left. Doesn't matter though, this is actually gonna do it from the looks of it. Cybernetic Pony having been pushed against the wall and unable to get any tech in the meantime. Now he might jump forward and try to get chronoporting and then jump back, but that reef does die pretty handily. So I don't know, and this attack is not gonna work out. Monkey's chronoport departure already in the unplayable past. I don't even know if it's possible for Cybernetic Pony with chronoporting to deal with this, and he doesn't have another reef. That's the thing, with no other reef, he doesn't have any way of getting tech. So he is stuck here, going for this counterattack, hoping for the best, but even now it's not going to work out. Unfortunately, Cybernetic Pony does lose everything. This damage here in the blue time wave, that is rep just wrecking Cybernetic Pony entirely. We're looking at Monkey's point of view, so this blue is all him. Cybernetic Pony on his side, he is now seeing the destruction of his base, and the fact that he has lost the game, Monkey, the really nice, basically, tech behind the cover of damage. That was it, that was a good thing to do. That or expansion, but in this case, tech was the right option. Going for the chronoport, going for the uppercut to basically reinforce. So these these Zion Turchers here coming back, reinforcing themselves, and ultimately winning the game. So yeah, that's that is game. Nice, very nice use of chronoporting for the purposes of essentially self reinforcement. 
think that's what the term is called. Unfortunately, I forgot a lot of the chrono pointing terms, being that those sets of chrono pointing tactics, other than uppercuts, haven't really been used a whole lot. Admittedly, that was an uppercut, but it was an uppercut for self reinforcement purposes. So that's a bit different. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and I will be back with last game of the night in just a couple minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs>